Okay, hello. Uh, this is the way we're uh, doing uh, conferences now. I'm sorry I'm uh, uh, not in uh, person somewhere. And to mark the event, I, I thought I'd do a picture of uh, an airport. This is a picture of a Sydney airport taken from a, a hotel window. And I uh, very much look forward to the time when we're routinely traveling again and meeting face to face and having these uh, discussions. Uh, that said, I'm uh, pleased uh, to talk at the conference and also pleased to talk about metadata, to talk a little bit about uh, some trends that I see, but then also, uh, as the organizers asked, to say a little bit about what we're doing at OCRC in that uh, context. I'm going to talk uh, about three things uh, broadly. Uh, very quickly say something about metadata generally. Uh, very quickly talk about two uh, directions that are quite important and then say something about how OCLC is responding in the context of those um, directions. First of all, just to say about metadata, we're, we're moving into an environment that is very much more uh, digital, very uh, much more uh, automated. And I think our view of metadata changes as we, as we move forward. So metadata, formally, you might say, is schematized assertions about a resource. It's, uh, it's uh, formatted, it makes a claim, it's about a, a resource. Uh, but I think if we think about the environment we're in, that really we need metadata because it relieves a potential user of having to have full advanced knowledge of the existence or characteristics of a resource. And by this I mean in the digital environment, if we're going to interact with resources, if we're going to interact with workflows, if we're going to move around an environment, we don't want to have to know in advance the characteristics of everything that's in that environment. We don't want to know in advance how everything behaves, what is there. We need intelligence in that system, and that really is the uh, vital importance of uh, metadata. So we're used to thinking about metadata as applied to information objects that we manage and discover. Increasingly, in the digital environments in which we work, in which we move, in which we uh, entertain ourselves, in which we learn, in which we research, we're surrounded by workflows and objects, all of which need to be uh, described so that those systems can work together easily. So metadata is very much the intelligence in the digital environment. Metadata applies to resources. We know this. We want to discover, compare, reuse, buy resources. To do those things smoothly and effectively, we need uh, metadata about those resources, how they behave, how they're available, what they are. But increasingly, we interact with resources through workflows. Workflows are the... Um, the resources, uh, the people, the applications tied together so that we can actually get things done. And I have an example of research information management, which I think is really quite interesting from a metadata point of view coming up. And then all of this is in this broader environment where we're interacting uh, with resources. Um, we have become used to um, interacting in networks, in environments, and I put up um, Strava there, the uh, application used by um, uh, runners, bikers, uh, athletes. Um, and if you think about the metadata requirements for something like that, the metadata attached to people, the metadata attached to uh, events and so on, to make that all work together, uh, we increasingly interact with those types of things uh, all around us. In this context, I want to highlight two directions that uh, are uh, quite important at the moment. So those two directions, the first is uh, what we call uh, entification. So we uh, in the library community are used to thinking about resources, uh, books, journals, digital content as the entity of interest. And we give those identifiers. We're used to ISBNs. We're used to um, OCLC numbers. We're used to uh, DOIs now. But increasingly, what we want to do is to give an identity to all the resources of interest to us. We want to give an identity to organizations. We want to give an identity to uh, places. We want to be able to refer to those in applications and do sensible things with those. So identification, giving a singular identity to all the resources of interest, 
associating those with metadata, and then thinking about the relationships between those, being able to navigate a, a graph of those uh, entities. The second area that's become very important and heightened in the last year, um, certainly in, in the US, but also uh, around the world, is pluralization, thinking about better representing the identities, the memories, the experiences of a wide range of communities in our descriptive apparatus. Communities that may have been overlooked or shunned or marginalized, or communities that may have been represented in particular ways because a dominant voice, a politically dominant voice, some other voice has been responsible for uh, the description. And there's a big movement now to think about how do we repair some of that harm? How do we think about just uh, description? So those are two very important trends that we're seeing happening at the moment um, that are having some wide uh, application in uh, library uh, metadata environments and certainly in OCLC. So thinking about uh, entification, as I say, we very much want to create a singular identity for something, gather information about those entities. Think about Google, for example. When you do a search on Google, they give you a card for the thing you're searching. They're trying to say, rather than just giving you a big list of results, they're trying to say, here's the thing that you might be looking for, or here are the things that you might be looking for, and here's some stuff we've collected about those things. Here's some information we've collected about those things, and here are some links to other things that you might be interested in, those entities. And then you want to create relationships between these. We're, we're used to relationships like citation, uh, like a derivative work. But then you have things like affiliation. Where does somebody work? Do they work in a research lab? Do they work in a university? Are they from a particular place? And can you make connections among those things that help us analyze um, the uh, whole uh, environment? So an example is uh, research information management. This has become very important in a variety of uh, university uh, settings. Um, uh, of variable interest across different countries. It depends on the research environment, but it has emerged as a uh, very important area. There are now a variety of um, commercial systems that support this area. There's some open source activity. There's some other uh, activity that supports uh, research uh, information management. But if you think about research information management, this is managing uh, the research outputs, the research practices, behaviors of uh, an institution, and uh, it's to support things like expertise profiles, but also faculty activity reporting, uh, various other aspects of that research workflow, of that research practice. And in the context of research information management, there are a variety of uh, metadata requirements. So people want to know about researchers, their affiliations, their collaborations. They want to know about the research outputs not just uh, documents or articles, but research data maybe, uh, maybe software. Um, they want to know about grants, projects. Um, they want to know about laboratories. You want to tie all of these things together. You want to be able to move between uh, these uh, areas. So within the research information management context, there's very much a move, a desire, to be able to describe all of these things, to attach identifiers to them, to build relationships uh, across them. And just to give an example, here is the uh, um, uh, uh, public face of the research information management system at the University of Minnesota. It's actually based on a, 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 a system available from uh, Elsevier. And if you look across the bottom, uh, maybe a little bit small, but there are a variety of uh, entities mentioned here. There's profiles, that's individual researchers, people. There's research units. There's university assets. Uh, university assets are the things that the university has, specialist equipment, uh, laboratories, uh, things that the university has that people want to use that support research that might be interesting in the context of describing a project or something else projects and grants, research output, the articles, the uh, preprints, the research data. So 
These individual entities are important in their own right, and the relationship between them is uh, important. This is a university asset, quite interesting, um, describing a uh, piece of equipment. Um, and uh, quite interesting, you know, there's a hierarchy over here, university imaging centers, light mus microscopy, and then individual uh, pieces of uh, equipment. So describing, giving an identity to uh, various assets within the university so that they can be linked together and linked to other things. From a profile point of view, this is a search, uh, this is a legal scholar, Fanula at Nielon, and uh, when you bring up, when you do a search, you find uh, this person, and then you also see there's one profile, so that's a description of the person, nine projects and grants, so description of those grants, 96 research outputs, and then some uh, media mentions. So these are other entities that are described and linked together. And this allows you then to build things on top of this. So this is a looking at research collaborations between the University of Minnesota and other areas based on analyzing the metadata about those research outputs and other uh, aspects. So this is then uh, a list of some of the collaborations with uh, Ireland. This is the uh, profile. Um, uh, quite interesting down here, then, because you've got metadata, they map it to uh, the Sustainable Development Goals, an initiative of the United Nations. So you can profile the research uh, in the context of the Sustainable Development Goals. But then based on the metadata, they give a sort of characterization of the research, but then they link it to other researchers, to other organizations. You've got the projects and grants research output. So again, rather than just doing a search, a text search, and finding some results, what we're looking at is increasingly a set of entities, a set of resources that are described and linked, and then analyzed in various ways, uh, described in various ways, presented in various ways. Here's the same researcher in another system, uh, Dimensions, uh, from Digital Science, and here you can see similarly this focus on uh, identified uh, entities. So you've got the uh, resource types, you know, the publications, grants, uh, policy documents across the top. You've got some research categories. You've got other researchers that might be related. Um, so increasingly thinking about the things that are of interest, the entities that are of interest, and relating those together. Now, Various organizations build on top of this, uh, various analytics, various uh, um, ways of analyzing the research. What I'm interested in here, though, is just this move to think about making sure that all the entities of interest to us uh, have identifiers and then can be used in, in systems in particular ways. The second trend identified was uh, pluralization. This is clearly uh, become a major topic of interest after the uh, murder of George uh, Floyd uh, in the US, uh, a moment of reckoning uh, for uh, libraries, uh, for practices. But this is accelerating uh, an interest that was already there, but it has made people much more aware of uh, harmful description, dated description, uh, descriptions that don't respect cultural protocols or norms of particular uh, peoples or uh, experiences that represent uh, an occupier or uh, historically dominant uh, perspective, um, that don't include important experiences or perspectives that were excluded by that dominant perspective, um, that may embody partial cultural assumptions that don't reflect uh, the full uh, experience or values of a particular community. So all of these issues have become much more um, uh, prominent in uh, library uh, discussions. Now we have done uh, some work uh, here and there's a, a, a discussion at, at this blog entry on hanging together of some of these issues in the context of a, a, a survey that we did looking at uh, uh, some of these uh, issues, particularly in relation to um, uh, indigenous, uh, the characterization of indigenous uh, populations and materials. 
In that survey, which was done in 2017 before um, the uh, uh, um, George Floyd uh, murder, the, um, there was already this growing concern that if you think about equity and diversity and inclusion, what are uh, things that are changed or important or planned? And you can see metadata descriptions for archival materials um, already uh, had uh, received attention. But if you look at the areas where people were planning, uh, metadata descriptions in uh, library catalogs, in digitized collections, and then terminologies and vocabularies generally. A recognition that uh, we need to think about uh, these things and that uh, recognition heightened uh, in the context of uh, the last uh, year. Okay, so those two uh, important trends, identification and pluralization, let's think about uh, some things that are happening at OCLC in that context. So identification, we have a large uh, project underway called Shared Entity Management Infrastructure, and I'll give some uh, background to that. Now this is in the context of thinking about identification in libraries, and, and one of the ways we talk about this is clearly you know, linked data. Linked data is about giving uh, entities and identity, and then uh, linking those together in various ways, publishing uh, metadata about those. For that to move into common use, though, uh, libraries need reliable, persistent identifiers and metadata for the critical entities they rely on. So this project begins to build that infrastructure in a library community and then uh, advance uh, the whole field in that way. So our work in this area is based on a long history of experimental and prototyping work to begin to really figure out how we're going to work with linked data, how we're going to work with more uh, entified resources. And uh, the, a major foundation for this is the work that we've done with particular vocabularies, VF, the Virtual International Authority file, uh, which is um, a coming together of authority files from national libraries around the world. We work with national libraries, we harmonize, we uh, merge those files, we give uh, uh, singular identities to the persons, we link them to other identities, and that is widely used and is foundational in much of the work that we do. We've also worked uh, on FAST, which is a faceting of the Library of Congress subject headings, looking at splitting it up into topic, uh, place, and then giving those uh, an identity so that, again, they can be used in this type of environment. A range of other uh, work, uh, some more specialist, looking at aspects of reconciliation, of uh, um, uh, how to uh, manage uh, metadata in this environment, looking at workflows, processing, and, and really moving towards this idea of linked data at scale. A very important uh, marker in this context is Project Passage. You'll find a report about it on our website. And this really began to explore in practice creating uh, linked data at scale, identifying uh, uh, what we have, thinking about the entities that are important, giving them uh, identities. And one of the uh, interesting things here is uh, really exploring uh, some of the technologies. And we used uh, Wikibase, uh, used some other uh, technologies here. And this gradually feeding uh, into uh, what has become a, a production um, uh, initiative looking at how we roll out uh, this type of infrastructure, this type of entity management infrastructure uh, to the community. And I'm going to talk about semi-shared entity management infrastructure now, which is uh, OCLC's flagship project in this area, which we are currently uh, working on. Uh, semi. Um, importantly, supported by the Andrew Mellon Foundation, um, uh, OCLC uh, working, um, um, contributing um, uh, its own resources uh, alongside that. So the, what SEMI is doing is creating production infrastructure. So infrastructure that is available in services that the library community can rely on for work and person entities. So for works, for intellectual works, and for people, for persons. 
We want to provide support for multiple descriptive and encoding standards, have persistent identifiers. Um, so uh, the, the uh, semi will have an identifier, but then we also want to link to other identifiers for those. So ORCID is very important for persons. Where there's an ORCID link to that, link to a VF identifier, link to uh, identifiers that are available. And really, most importantly, we are trying to do this in a context that we work with representatives of the uh, library community to advance a view of how this uh, works in practice. And this is uh, a snapshot of a variety of the organizations that are involved as we move uh, that forward. Quite a lot of uh, US-based organizations, but then uh, national uh, libraries and organizations from around um, the world. From an activity point of view, this is a very busy slide, but I just wanted to give a, a quick uh, idea. So using Wikibase, um, we have um, uh, millions of en uh, 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 entities uh, at scale, moving data in there, tr um, looking at simple search and read. Um, we have uh, scaled it up. Uh, looked at not just searching tools, but creation and editing tools. Um, and then uh, through this year, adding more data sources, making it more useful from a functionality point of view, um, towards the end of the year, looking at really scaling the whole thing up so that you have production service looking at the full data and preparing uh, for uh, release uh, next year. So what we hope with this is that we will have production infrastructure that provides a basis for these two entities initially, in the longer term, uh, other entities that gives a reliable backbone, a source of identifiers and a source of uh, metadata. So uh, really quite important for the library uh, community. The other initiative I wanted to mention from the point of view of pluralization, also um, supported by the Andrew Mellon Foundation, is looking at reimagining descriptive workflows. So um, the issues that I mentioned earlier are now of general concern, but the question is, how do we address these at scale? Individual libraries, archives, museums are beginning to do things with their own collections and with their own catalogs. But we really need to think about this from a systemic, community, scaled uh, type of level. So OCLC is doing some work internally, um, and we're looking at our own vocabularies, our own processes, the way we describe things. One of the things that we've done, for example, is we've removed master record from the way we talk about things. We talk about a world count record. But what we're doing is we're organizing a convening, a meeting, a coming together of stakeholders uh, who have a particular experience, a particular knowledge uh, in this area. And what we want to do is to look at the variety of ways in which people are approaching this topic at the moment, and then to identify those places where uh, we need really to think about scaling up that activity or doing things at a community level. The output of this then will be a community agenda, and this um, uh, should appear uh, towards the end of uh, this year. The meeting will be happening uh, over the next um, uh, couple of months, uh, it'll be online. But what we want to do is to produce a community agenda that suggests a variety of the ways in which as a community, we might move forward to uh, tackle this issue. And there will be areas that OCLC might be interested in advancing, but the purpose is to provide that community agenda so that uh, it can uh, create a conversation, but also create pathways uh, into uh, the future. So going back to the uh, survey that I mentioned, um, I just wanted to highlight that one of the uh, areas in the survey that was identified was this idea of linked data, this, this idea of having um, more entified data, so that one in one systems and services could be more sophisticated in terms of linking between vocabularies, in terms of identifying um, preferred terms, do, doing various things. So that's a sort of coming together of these um, two uh, interests. So linked data, mapping inappropriate terms to more appropriate ones. Um, so the idea that um, 
uh, one way of addressing some of the uh, issues in vocabularies is to uh, systematically begin to map those terms to um, uh, other terms, but to do that needing an infrastructure where that um, work can be captured so that it's made available more generally and can happen at scale. So I will pause there um, and thank you uh, very much. Um, I believe that uh, I, I uh, 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 am happy to take questions, but um, by uh, email. Um, those of you who want to uh, pursue these topics further should certainly look on our website, look on the research website. One very recent report uh, that I mentioned, uh, that I didn't mention, is uh, transitioning to the next generation of metadata. We've had a variety of conversations about this, a variety of conversations about what it means from a practical point of view to begin to think about um, the, this next sort of generation of metadata. And I encourage people to, uh, to read that report, to look at various of the blog entries that describe um, um, various national uh, convenings discussing that. So with that, uh, I will say uh, thank you very much and uh, um, goodbye. <laughs>